Good morning and welcome to The Lost Soul Chapter 2 The National Fuse Smitten by curiosity I returned to Greenwood Cemetery the next weekend and this time found the grave of William Rogers Green With relative ease but to its right where the Confederate soldier was supposed to be buried there was no sign of a marker I decided to call the author of the guidebook that had led me to the cemetery. Speaking from her home in Chicago, the author explained that she had lost many of her records and had forgotten how she had heard of the grave. Not long after our conversation, another rounder, at my request, wrote to the author inquiring about the grave. I was quite surprised when the author referred the person to me. Sadly, the reference to the grave had been deleted from subsequent editions of the book. I couldn't help but feel that Samuel Postlewaite had somehow been cheated, and in a sense I felt responsible for him. His very existence had suddenly been denied, and it was partly my fault. My curiosity had begun to evolve into a sense of purpose to me. Sam became symbolic of forgotten soldiers of all wars, a lost soul. As time allowed, I began checking with local historic societies. None of them knew of any Confederate soldier buried around. Considering this beautifully marked Union graves throughout the state, the plight of this lone, lost veteran was to me both sad and a known mystery. Who was he? Why did he? What did he see in the war? Why was he buried, Mister Mister Green? Was he really buried there at all? Determined to learn of Sam's military experience in civilian life, I spent the late winter of 1991 grasping at academic straws. Which former Confederate street had he come from? With no other options available, I compiled the names and addresses of more than 100 newspapers, universities, and historical societies throughout the South. I had a name and knew that it belonged to a Confederate soldier, that was all. I sent a brief form letter seeking information on Confederate soldiers to impossibly to each institution during the ensuing weeks. Replies to my queries filled my mailbox, and I grew accustomed to negative responses. I became convinced that my meddling, my needle in a haystack, My needle in a haystack method of research would be fruitless. It seems that Sam will remain a mystery. But the last week of March brought a surprise and a major breakthrough. John Ferguson, a state historian of Arkansas, contacted me and related that Samuel passed away with Private and Company D, the 21st Mississippi Infantry. The state of Mississippi was 